let's kick it off um, and we will start. Uh, so welcome everybody to Coffee and Councils. I'm Jeff. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we are excited today. We're going to do, be doing a little bit of a tech preview uh, of some upcoming Yukon functionality. So we're, we're pretty stoked about that. Um, we also have uh, Gil Gowing and Tony Joy and Robert Miller from Avid on the line. Um, so as always, uh, we, we are happy to, uh, you know, exchange and interchange with ideas. Um, if you haven't been here before, the, the idea really is to to really explore the technology, the applications of the technology. So this session is going to be a little bit different just because we're showing, you know, kind of some upcoming functionality with the assignable knob. Uh, but um, uh, we're going to cover other things as well. And uh, please, you know, um, uh, speak up if there's something that's um, interesting or confusing or you want more information about. The guys can also, if you want to throw things in the chat, the guys can also man that. And um, often, you know, just kind of pinging off each other, you can kind of get some answers. So. So that's the idea. Um, so we are glad that you're here and uh, we're gonna dig in, I think, on some really cool stuff. Just ag additional improvements, um, enhancements, fixes, hardening on functionality in S4 and S6. And um, we're gonna start this time with a, with a, um, with a keynote because I wanna take you through the concept since it's new and people haven't explored this yet. And then we'll flip over to the desk and actually look at the practical and actually look at it in the flesh. Um, but um, yeah, let's let's kick it off. Uh, so so thanks for thanks for stopping by. So we are going to be looking at um, Yukon 2022.4, which is um, kind of in the late stages of beta and just kind of being wrapped up. Um, and that's what we're going to take a look at here today. So pretty excited to be able to show you some stuff. We'll take a look at um, really kind of some of the biggest concepts that are in here. And the biggest one is the assignable knob. Um, just kind of give you a, a basic overview of this. Uh, there was functionality on the desk that had uh, had been available or capable or working for um, third party DAWs like like Logic and like Cubase, um, but never it was never enabled in Pro Tools, and uh, that will be now, and that's um, kind of the, the focus of what we're going to look at. So conceptually, basically the idea is that um, from Pro Tools, we can you can hover over many different parameters, pan, sends, plugins, etc., and uh, basically then light up a, a knob, an encoder that's centrally located on the master module um that can be controlled right a touch sensitive color you know color coded uh, encoder uh to be able to adjust that thing whether it's a an elevation for for an atmos pan or whether it's a send or whether it's a preamp whatever it is right you can you can tweak it um and so that's kind of the beginning um and then from there you can um you can lock it right you can bind it meaning you know i can move around and attention different tracks and spill and do folders and whatever um but i can always get back to that one kind of locked knob uh, which is pretty cool um then we'll talk a little bit more about um kind of what you see there um how you use it and then even taking advantage of the jog wheel right so you can actually optionally mirror that parameter that you've docked down to the jog wheel as well which is pretty cool because the jog wheel is a really nice kind of heavy weighted interface and um, it's a great feeling great for certain parameters to be able to um, do controls um, from that actually a touch sensitive jog wheel. Um, so we'll look at all that that's really kind of the biggest um, kind of concept, um, but there are some some soft keys in here. And um, again, I've kind of gone down the rabbit hole uh, for you, but I'm going to help you down the rabbit hole a little bit. But um, I'm actually I think there's some really powerful stuff in here now, and um, um, they've worked on really hardening some of these more complex um, soft keys. Let's just say I'll, I'll take you through this, but the concept of like actually gluing together surface functions and Yukon functions, right? We'll actually look at a lot of these um, things like bring up certain tracks and bring up a certain view with specific windows and Pro Tools at the same time. And it can be very, very handy to do that, as you can imagine with numerous, you know, windows for panners and plugins and, and, and Dolby Atmos things, you know, binaural render configuration, stuff like that. There's a lot of possible things you could want to see. Um, but if you can, if you can in one foul swoop, one foul swoop, you can basically push a button, get to get the tracks, get the view, and then get all the views on your UI in, in Pro Tools. It's really pretty handy. So we'll look at those concepts. Um, we'll look at some other, there's various other improvements in the app set. Um, a couple of disclaimers before we kind of go to the next slide. <laughs> um, 
I am, well, I'll, I'll talk about it when we get there, right? But I'm actually gonna be changing a lot of windows as a function of what we're talking about here is like window configurations and layouts. And then I've got a whole nother layer of window changing that I'm showing you, which is via Zoom, um, which is using Stream Deck and, and Moom and some other tools. So we'll, we'll get into some more details there, but I don't wanna um, get too far in yet. Okay, so let's talk about the assignable knob a bit. I'm gonna just gonna lay this all out, then we're gonna flip over to Pro Tools and look at it. So dedicated encoder, it is basically, you know, it's whatever you throw over there, you've got it. It's a touch sensitive encoder, it's color coded. So if you take a look at a glance, oh yeah, that's an insert parameter. I can see that's the ribbon from an eventide plugin, right? Pretty simple. I can either have it hover or I can lock, meaning I can be adjusting a bunch of different things kind of on the fly, or I can say, you know what, I want to keep this elevation here for, for the um, Z because I want to get back to it. And that's, a, that's another, it gives you one other con container that you can lock, right, which I think is a really, really useful thing. Okay, so, so pan, sends, volume, we're going to look at targeting a whole bunch of different things. And the Pro Tools will tell you, hey, you're targeting me, right? You'll, you'll see some feedback there, okay? We'll look at the jog wheel, because I think that's a really cool interface um, and it feels really good and it's really easy to do smooth moves, whether in, in real time or half time, you know, half speed automation, half speed playback, things like that, okay? And then we'll look at automation as well, because you do have all of the information about the values, the parameters, and then the automation state on the knob and the, the jog wheel as well, okay? So let's just look a little bit deeper at the interface. Where is the assignable knob? Well, it's located on the master module, right? It's, uh, and it's just below the bank nudge switches, right? So you can see it's right there, just kind of to the left of some of those off keys. Um, you're, it's, you're gonna see information about the parameter, you're gonna see automation state, you're gonna see the color coding of the parameter and whether that's locked or not, and whether it's being um, sent also to the jog wheel. And the jog wheel is going to show you the parameter value and it the leds are going to change depending on what the values are i'll show you that whether it's a send or whether it's a a q for um excuse me for a, a eq right bandwidth things like that um and then the function type and the automation state okay so that's a little so, bit about so real quick jeff yeah. the, mm -hmm. the the jog wheel enabled can you once that's enabled does it just stay that way so anything at, at, while it's there you don't have to continually have to manage that you'll be able to just hover over different things and it would then go both to the the assignable knob and the jog wheel correct exactly yeah it's a mirrored function yeah so we'll, we'll show you some hover ideas where you know i see it as kind of like a or b a is hover and just do a bunch of stuff and yeah you could use the jog and we'll do that or b is lock something there that you know you're going to kind of repeatedly use Meanwhile, you're doing stuff on the desk with custom faders, custom knobs, but I still want to get back to that. So there's there's an A, B, kind of an A and a B use case, I think, and we'll show you those. So yeah, I think it's pretty slick. Um, what can you actually control? Well, we can control panning, any kind of panning, right? Channel-based, immersive, you know, height, Z, size, all that stuff. You can control any kind of volume. It could be a track, it could be an aux, it could be a, uh, you know, a VCA, it could be a, a routing folder, any of that volume-based stuff. You can control clip effects, right? So parameters and clip effects, whether it's an input trim or a high-pass filter or a band boost or whatever. Um, obviously plugins, you can control any plugin uh, parameter, which is certainly gonna be a very popular thing to control. And then you can even control audio suite. Right. And by leveraging, we'll look at this in a little bit more uh, detail uh, by leveraging some kind of, um, you know, kind of macros or soft keys, if you will, to bring up audio suite functions and then to be able to control those because you've got a, a stack of things that you're maybe rendering to a clip that can be pretty cool because you again you could hover and tweak and hover and tweak and hover and tweak and it's right there and then boom go to a different window configuration of either different audio suite different real time different panning whatever so these are actually um the kind of the concept of the assignable knob wheel plus the things that we're showing with the um window configs i think is going to be pretty slick when, when you actually kind of start to implement this um again just just to kind of throw some more applications out there we won't look at all these but just really quickly um parameters from plugins yeah obviously sends you can see the send and kind of how that manifests i'm controlling a slapper um revive that's actually kind of slick i was playing with this a little bit and you could step through you know quickly get through room types right so if you're like oh, i want to get to a spring and then i want to kind of go through the springs you could actually just throw that on the on the knob and be able to change room types while you're actually controlling you know decays and pre-delays and stuff from the faders 
So just some different, again, trying to expose you to different ideas that you might want to explore. That's really what this is all about. And we'll look at some of these in the flesh. Um, I've only thrown this up there because I've, uh, some of the things we're going to look at are, are, are adding back in uh, concepts that we talked about previously. So I just wanted to bring swap layer back up here because we're going to use it in, in my, my default set when I start to explain what the default set is. Okay. So what is a swap layer? Well, it's part of a track layout. It just says I can have up to four layers of things, stuff, tracks underneath the one, the top level track. So I just wanted to bring that up again. because I'm going to show you this and we're going to use it when we bring up a composite, um, soft key that's a layout slash marker or layout slash window config. Okay. So that's, I wanted to bring that up. Um, if we have time, I do want to kind of dovetail back to more concepts about mapping. Cause you know, everybody's kind of started to really kind of jump into mapping to make things optimally for their workflow. And I want to kind of maybe do a little more best practices about, um, holistic mapping. What do I mean by that? Well, basically being, you know, using multiple sections as one to get a good experience. And, and I'll show you an example of that. I thought that was something that was kind of cool. Uh, okay. And then I think this is my last slide. <laughs> I promise. Um, then the concepts that I think will be really useful alongside the assignable knob, assignable wheel, which is um, built into the new app, app set, you can quickly get to 24 uh composite track layout uh, track layout slash memory locations or track layout slash window configurations and i'll explain this i'll show you where this is at how to get to it how to program it how to tweak it but um it's basically just shift plus or shift minus the, the plus and minus that are on the edges of the wheel um shift as always is on the fader module we'll go through this we'll show you how to do this but i think it's um pretty cool and i think people will take advantage of it once you see what you can do with it uh that's it okay so let's um Let's get out of this view here. And I think the first thing we're going to do is, well, we'll do a couple things. Let me just give you a little navigation tweak, first of all. OK, so and then we'll dig into assignable knob. So I'm just going to go to my big cam here for a second view and you should be able to see the desk. Um, I've zoomed in a little bit further this time because we're going to look we're going to spend more time like right here basically in a little bit of faders, but mostly right here. So that's why I kind of zoomed in. But what I want to do real quick, real quick, is give you an overview of my default. Um, and this will be important because we will come back to this in some of these concepts with the window configurations and the layouts. But before we get into the assignable knob, I want to show you this because I think it's important. So as I said, shift plus is going to give you it's going to light up the bottom essentially the soft keys on the automation module right that's 24 composite layout slash window configurations or shift minus is layouts and memory locations so memory locations is minus window configurations is plus and then if you just want window changes you do have a whole 24 of just window configurations okay so why am i showing you this well because if i press default um, we're going to really get into a lot about creating a default set. And I think this is really powerful. Not only is it leveraging some of the best stuff on S4, S6, like, like um, you know, folders, basic folders, routing folders, VCAs, swap layers, but it's also giving you a kind of a starting, a springboard to start from, right? Yeah, you can use folders, but it's a nice place to start from both with the desk and what you're going to see in Pro Tools. And I'm going to show you Pro Tools in a second, but just stand by. So. For this particular example, for the next you know 45 minutes, uh, I've just got I brought back up my kind of my toolkit, my template for Atmos, just as a as a as a useful thing to show because it has buckets of stuff and buckets of stuff are what well there's basically these are all um, basically basic basic folders right so if I want to see processing I can just spill into processing and I've actually subdivided it off into verbs and delays and things like that so we're looking at a couple different verbs. Um, we're looking at objects and I could actually use a swap layer and just say, you know, just give me my stereo objects quickly. Right. And that's what that is. Uh, stereo objects, object limiters, you know, whatever. So I have swap layers in there, which we'll, we'll talk about in more detail. I have idents. What are idents? Well, basically they are, um, they are basically, um, channel identifications, right? So left, right, center, we'll look at these spoken channels or Dolby Pink that I can get to quickly. And that's what we're looking at. Okay, so not going to go into too much tediousness on this, but that's what all these are. And they're all folder contained into subfolders 
So that's where we're going to start. And um, so, yeah. OK, cool. So let's um, let's go into zoom out a second here and let's go look in some detail at the assignable knob. That's a great place to start. So I'm going to show I'm going to show a OK, so I'm going to actually press clear and you're going to see one thing happen. You're going to see Pro Tools change slightly. And I'm going to go then on my, on my um, bring up a different view here so you can see this. OK, so what are we doing here? Well, we are going to I'm specifically I'm intentionally showing the mix window. OK, and let me just move. Of course, the zoom thing is in the way, as always move that out of the way. OK, so left side, we've got the desk right side. We've got Pro Tools. So I want to show get into the assignable knob a bit here. So what are we going to do? Well, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to actually show another parameter here and I want to also expand all the sends. And we've got volumes and let's actually bring up a pan as well, because I want to show you some various different things and we'll do this all this way. OK, so here's what we're going to do. So first things first, um, the concept of the assignable knob, basically take your mouse and um, we're going to also bring up the window for the, the panner or uh, for the remote mic break as well. So as much stuff as I can show you in one fell swoop. Um, OK, so basically hover your mouse over a control and then this glows red. Red is always input slash preamp, right? That's what that is. Move your mouse to some other thing that you want to control. In this case, it's a send. Now it's uh, cinematic rooms. In this case, it's going to Stratus. In this case, it's going to Slapper. In this case, it's going to Pro Sub. And you can see now that's yellow because it's a send. Let's go back to the mic pre, right? That's red. That's a mic pre. Let's go into, let's scroll down to a, just a, a, you know, a essentially a, a track or an aux that's white. Right. And that could, again, be a VCA, could be a routing folder, could be whatever. But the idea is basically you can hover over anything in the UI and that is uh, basically bound. Let's just go expand the um, the EQ so you can see that a little bit better. So we're going to go up here. We're going to open up channel strip as well. And let's just go maybe grab a filter. So I'm going to hover over filter frequency. Right. And there's your high pass filter frequency. Right. Let's enable dynamics. Um, so whatever, right? I could actually hover over the slope. I could hover over uh, frequency, etc. Okay. So that's the basics, right? So I can hover over something. Um, in Pro Tools, there's a preference. You'd probably want to keep it on, but you can disable the, the indication that you are um, that you are hovering, right? That it says, "Hey, I'm, this is what's being bound to the assignable knob." So that's the first part. Okay. So let's. Um, let's uh let's just go grab stratus for a second i'm going to press the encoder now and by pressing the encoder it actually shows a lock in the circle and now that's bound <clears throat> i'm basically this is independent of the attention track it's independent of my view it's really independent of everything it's it's basically there forever until i unlock it right so if i go up to uh let's just scroll down i go to the fader i go to preamp i go to whatever else and i could even i don't have to see this right it's bound okay so um now the fader popping up as always i'll go we'll show you the preference again in a second because that's important the fader popping up as always is a preference on the desk and i'm going to show you that in just a second but it's locked it's assigned and um it's there um i could uh um I could grab that. I can now press the back or the arrow switch underneath the assignable knob, and that's going to dock that down to the wheel. OK, so now that locked function is the send, uh, which goes into um, Stratus, right? And it's controllable in multiple places now, right? Both from the from the jog wheel and from the um, and from the knob. OK, so let's unlock. Let's keep it there. Let's actually press the encoder. OK, and let's retarget something else. Right. And you can see I've got uh, the channel level. I've got various sends. I've got preamp. Right. And I can do it either with the jog wheel or with the encoder. And that's kind of that hovering state that we talked about. It's not locked. Right. I grab my mouse and move somewhere else. And now I can target something else because I didn't intentionally lock it. OK. So that's where we're going to start. I think that's um, a pretty cool <clears throat> kind of idea of what's going on there. Um, so let's actually change our view slightly so we can see a little bit different. And then we're going to move around a little bit. OK, so um, let us go to let's look at some effects. Let's look at some um, 
some plugins and things like that. So um, on the desk, and I'm gonna kind of keep leveraging some of these ideas of, of the window configurations because it is very powerful. I'm gonna actually go and press, uh, recall a layout slash window config, which is right here. And this one's called effects. And um, we can actually go and let's go to, yeah, let's go to this one first, actually. Slightly different view, and then I'm gonna change my view so you can see me at the same time. Okay, so explain this. I've got a couple different effects up. On the desk, this recall the layout in that one, I'm gonna go jump over there and show you this in a second on the actual MTM. But that recalled a bunch of uh, effects returns, right? You can see black hole, cinematic room, stratus. Those are actually folders containing all the parts of those you know, kind of Atmos reverbs, Pro Sub, Slapper, uh, and then the Tone Boosters reverb, okay? So what I wanna do is show you a couple things. So first of all, very simply, we're gonna go and I'm gonna take my mouse on Black Hole and I'm gonna grab the ribbon. And if you haven't played with this, it's, it's pretty cool because you can have, you know, plus or minus ranges based on parameters and then you can adjust them all with the ribbon. So that's a, a pretty neat thing to actually be able to tweak from here. Um, I can lock that. All right, so I have it locked in both places right now. Um, and um, the cool thing about that is, right, regardless of the attention track, let's just attention, uh, let's just attention maybe the, the, the pro sub, right? I'm gonna attention that track and we're gonna go into the pro sub, right? And actually want to, you know, control this. Um, we can do that and we could, uh, you know, we could create maps, obviously. Let's go into something different real quick here. Let's go into the tone boosters. For a second, okay. So I'm into the I'm in the tone boosters reverb right now, and um, uh, let's actually go to the uh, you know I've got some EQ parameters, I've got uh, you know some big stuff like decay and depth and stuff like that. So I'm controlling that plugin from um, uh, from the faders, and likewise I have something mapped to a different plugin, which is the ribbon on Black Hole. Right, so let's jump out of this. Let's go into black hole and now have control over individual parameters of size and pre delay. And then you can see my knob map, my fader map. Right, you can bypass that. But then I have, you know, kind of a big, big category map to the wheel. Right. Um, the cool thing about this is, and I'm going to show you the preference in just a second, is when I recalled the layout slash window config. I also set these to not target to detarget, and I'm going to explain this in a second again because it's really important the idea of that is that um I, I could have multiple views up and tweak effects returns or sends or pans or whatever and not have to worry about the plugin up opening jumping moving around i can actually you know uh i'm going to show you the preference in just a second but if i go and grab that again my preference is turned on to say show me the thing that i'm touching and if you take a look it's actually um, that red, uh, you know, it's not detargeted. It is actually targeted to be to be displayed. Okay, so I know that's a lot, but <laughs> let me um, let's go look at real quick. Let's go um, let's change the view because I want to show you a couple things I just showed you that are really important and a couple preferences that are that are critical. So settings um, right here. We we always talk about this. It seems like, but it's really important. So th what this says is if I touch a parameter show me plugins show me pan don't show me sends that's what that says right there okay so that's kind of that's really important certainly with the assignable stuff because if you have something that you want to get back to and it's locked you could you know you can touch it and bring it back immediately and that's what that's doing it doesn't have to be the attention track it can just be um you know anything in the session that you've locked and bound there but you might want to see the interface um and uh, if i didn't have that set to plugins and pan it wouldn't bring it back Right. Okay, so that's really important. The next thing that's also important is to discuss the concept or the view of the programming of the, the kind of the composite function that I, that I brought up. So let's see that. Let's take a look at this. Um, we're going to go to soft keys and we're going to go to a, uh, the uh, automation module, soft keys, right? And let's just look at, we'll go to default here first. So we're looking at this cluster of uh, 24 basically in this view it's layouts plus window configurations and i think this is really powerful basically i've created the bottom right hand corner when i've created is my default and my default and it doesn't have to be your default but my default is show me all those major folders in my project in my music or post session 
That's on the deaths. Those are the faders. And there's swap layers underneath there as well. And then show me a default view in whatever I want to see in Pro Tools. And I'm going to explain that in a second. We'll come back to that. But it's basically the combination of recalling a, uh, a in this case, it's 24, window configuration, window configuration 24 and track layout 24 in one button press. And I can program these. I can customize these. I can do whatever I want with these. And that's the beauty of this. So if I go and um, let's just go to change our view here. Now, what I want to show you real quick here is uh, the idea of being able to quickly change any of the views, right? So let's just do a little bit of modification. I'm not going to show you the desk just right this second, but we're just going to make some, some very significant changes to what you see in the Pro Tools interface. And we're going to go and show that we're going to show that and we're going to completely change what's displayed here right okay so obviously this state whatever i want to see whether it's in the mix window or the edit window with plugin windows open or not um that is a state that i could save right i could hit enter and i could preserve this as some uh some locate some window configuration that i want to bring back right why is this cool well, because if I press default, I get back to my state and I can quickly get to um, any other states, right? I can change to show me the clip in, right? Don't show me the clip, clip in, show me, you know, a various different view. And then essentially, you know, get me back to my default working state, which is with the channels and everything on there that I need to see. Okay. Time. That's good. Um, okay. So I had a little issue, but um, again, everything that I have here is beta, and that's why you don't have it yet. But so let me back up a second and just uh, kind of reiterate a couple things I think that are really important. One, we're going to go back. I'm going to press Shift Zero. That gets back to our default state here. Okay. I'm going to do Shift Plus. What is that doing? Well, it's bringing up a composite view of layouts plus win configs. Okay. I'm going to press Default. What is default? Well, default is basically a really powerful way for me to get to the view that I want in Pro Tools, right? Essentially the tracks, the inserts, sends, IO object, no clip in right now, specific view on the, on the top bar, and then stuff on the desk. What is the stuff on the desk? Well, brought me all my views. I have my channel identifications, which we've been talking about a lot, but I haven't showed you. <laughs> and... Uh, those are just basically spoken, you know, left, right, center, LFE, side surrounds, et cetera. Okay. And so if I want to quickly get to, um, uh, if I want to quickly get to any, let's see, any various piece, I could do that, right? So there's left, right, center, sub, et cetera. Okay. So let's back up a second um, and look at the back to the assignable knob but look at clip effects and also change our window configuration i know i'm, I'm doing a lot of things at once and, and it's, it is beta but i do want to show you some pretty cool things so what we're going to do is we're going to go and one go back into our view our shift plus okay i'm going to bring up uh you know i can quickly bring up a, a view for clip effects i can have it automatically change the view in the window to see what I want to see. And then I'm also going to change your view so I can actually see um, a certain track at the same time. Okay, so bear with me for a second here. Um, on the desk, I can say, let me see a certain track, this processing, actually, no, not the processing track. Let's go to the demo track and show me this, um, this percussion track. Okay, so, um, Basically, what are we doing here? Well, I'm rolling through clips with the previous or next, okay? And we're gonna go, I'm gonna go and grab the mouse and let's go say we wanna change the input trim, right? So I'm gonna go grab the input trim um, in Pro Tools and hover over that. Actually, this is locked. So remind me that that's locked. H grab the input trim and I'm input trimming a clip. All right, that's input trimmed. I'm rolling through clips. Okay, let's grab something different. Let's actually go grab uh, the high pass frequency, right? Let's extend it to the knob as well. So I'm going to actually change high pass on various clips, right? So high pass, 
high pass, high pass, high pass. I could also select a bunch of stuff, right? So I'm going to shift select a range of things and then adjust the high pass. So one particular parameter on um, on a clip or clips, right? With uh, with assignable knob, I can scroll down here. Then I'm you know then I'm grabbing low pass filter, etc. You get the idea. So um, that's not locked. It's not bound, but it's a quick way to get to a parameter. Let's do something different. Let's go into, um, let's change our view once again. And let's go to, uh, what do we wanna do here? Let's go back to our default view first, okay? And then we're gonna bring up a stack of audio suite processing this time. And um, just kind of show you that as well. So. To do that, I'm actually going to go in and we're going to bring up, um, yeah, this will work. I'm going to bring up Audio Suite, kind of a stack of stuff, and we'll bring, we'll go into a kind of a macro view of, on the camera. Okay, so what are we doing now? Well, I brought the camera up so you could see it. I'm recalling kind of combinations of window configurations and layouts, and then up here I have a bunch of uh of plugins that are audio suite that are recalled that are not you know that are accessible that i could now i could hover once again i could hover over and i could adjust anything within these there's your high pass filter there is you know some processing whatever that is there's noise or saturation or or gain or whatever so you can see uh you know maybe i'm doing a bunch of processing on one particular set of clip or clips on the timeline um, but I can I can access that stack of processing via audio suite via a window configuration, and then I can simply hover and um, and assign that and grab that and control that. Okay, so these are some of the ideas, some of the examples I want to show you. Let's let's do a couple more. Uh, make sure we're doing okay on time. Um, and uh, let's do this. Let's actually go and I'm gonna go and I'll show you why clear is really cool, uh, independent of what you see in Zoom. All I've got to do is go back to my, press my default layout win config. And just so you can see my camera once again, that gets me, let's press it one more time. That gets me back to that kind of known state on the desk and that known state in Pro Tools, right? That's why that's really cool. Um, let's do a recall on a layout slash marker, right? That's a different page. That's layouts and markers. I want to get to my idents press that that brought up all the channels with Dolby pink or or spoken channels right which you can see right there right there's left right center etc um and um it brought me that view that I wanted to see on the desk and kind of in both places okay so let's do this let's bring up some um uh let's see what we were gonna do here we were gonna show you the oh the effects specifically with regard to oh i know what i was going to show you okay so let's do this let's actually go back into our um our default state which is here right i'm going to go into processing um and i can actually you can see i've got verbs harmonizers delays i'm actually going to on a swap layer i'm going to pull verbs in so that i can see the verbs okay i'm going to push into a uh, revive so i want to bring that up right I have a custom map, as you can see. We're gonna do a little bit of a signable knob with Revive, and I think this is actually pretty cool. I think I made reference to this, but um, let me just bring up the camera so you can see that as well. So um, I can go and um, what I probably wanna do is change the view. Sorry, just bear with me one second uh, while I change the view so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, yeah, that's better. So on the desk, I have a custom map and custom knob controls, as you can see right but obviously if i go and grab a parameter on the plugin i can then i can tweak that immediately right i can engage the knob etc but one kind of neat thing with this plugin i could actually go into here into the room selection let's just say i go into oh i don't know maybe some of the springs right and i'm going to lock that and now i actually have the ability to roll through rooms i have you know, controls here on multiple pages, right? I can get to time and pre-delay and stuff like that. Um, I can get to, let's say I wanna get to springs, right? I wanna get to springs and then there's a certain spring that I wanna access. Um, I can actually just use the plus or minus, essentially the in and the cell are increment or decrement, right? So I want, I know that this is the, um, 
you know, dense spring too. And I can get there and then I can tweak from there. So that's kind of a cool application of, of that idea. And again, to kind of reiterate the concept of the, of the, of the windowing and how the windowing works. Let me show you two things because this is really important. Um, let's just say I exit out of this, right? I press this and I say, I want to go now into my, you know, I don't know, let's go back to black hole for a second. Okay, go back into black hole and start tweaking that. And it brought up that, that window, right? Because of my preferences, if I go and grab the assignable knob or wheel, it's going to go and bring me back my revive, right? Because that's what's stocked there. And the preference is set to display the thing that I touched. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's, it's, it's very powerful. Um, so let me close this. Let me just show you another concept that's uh, also important that I discussed, but I was kind of quick. That's really important. Um, the idea of, and let's go back to clear. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and re recall clear. And that, again, changes the window configuration to my choice. That changes the tracks to my, you have the ability to bring back a view. In my case, that view are the start, the high level folders, right? So under object, under that swap layer, there's objects, object mono, object stereo, object limiters. If I want to get to the object limiters, I can instantly get to the object limiters that have a pro limiter or you know a fab filter on those on each stereo object. If I want to get to the stereo objects, I just go to that that swap layer and I have those right on however much of the desk I want. So these are all contained within my start layout. And that start layout is recalled from that kind of composite view. Okay. So apologize. The windows are difficult because I'm changing windows in Pro Tools. And then I'm also changing windows so that you can see things. Okay. So one other thing I want to mention that's also powerful is if we go back to the um if we go back to the view of effects, I'm gonna show you this in a second here, right? This is cool because what this did is it brought up certain plugin, certain windows. They don't have to be plugins, but it brought up certain windows and it detargeted those so that I could, I don't have to worry about windows kind of showing up and going away. Again, if on the desk, I just jump into my processing folder and I jump into reverbs, I can go and say, you know, let's go into, let's go into black hole and I can control that. And, you know, again, I could dock, I could unlock this and which is still bound as you can see to revive which we talked about uh and then i can um let's go back sorry let's go back to our split view here so you can see this better um and then i can um i can assign that to uh to a control right um but i still have access to that other processor which is the tb verb which i'm going to look at in more detail in a second which is right here right and there's the tb verb and there's the the EQ and the decay time and the expert level controls, etc. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail because I did talk about kind of the idea of kind of holistic control. So I'm going to hit back. We're going to attention the TB verb. Okay, I'm going to go to the home page here for a second. I'm going to jump in, um, and let's say. Oh, let's see. What do we got here? Let's just say this starts at um, channel left is probably fine. Okay. Yeah. So here's what we got. So I, the concept of the holistic kind of mapping is, let me back out one more time. How are we doing on time? We're doing okay. The concept of this is that, you know, you can, you don't have to do exactly what I do with regard to faders and knobs and process and center section. You, you should do what makes sense for the way you want to use this tool. And I want to show you basically a couple concepts, maybe best practices or ideas. And the example for this is with the, this is a tone boosters reverb. I'm gonna push, it accesses my custom faders, my custom fader map, my custom knob map, and then also the um, the things that I put on the, the center section, right? Those four, those two columns of four. So what do we have here? Well, a couple things that I think are really useful is just very simple controls on the top level of the master touch module. If I want the analyzer on, excuse me, I can turn it on. If I want to change pages, right, I can I can quickly get to any specific page, like go to the shimmer, go to the decays, you know, go to the EQ, whatever, right? Now I'm in the decays. 
I have a dedicated page for um, for the decays, right? I have that. I have a dedicated page for EQs here, right? I've got multiple pages set up on faders, and that's how I like it, but you don't have to do that. The first page for me is always the most important kind of meat and potatoes controls, the pre-delay, the decay time, the wet dry. On the set on the center section, I've got a I've got a wet dry knob, I've got a dry knob, I've got the ability to lock the dry or lock or have no dry. And then here I've got really basic parameters that allow me to um, again change what the tab is viewing or um, you know bring up expert mode. Right, and then I can actually go in and um, you know access expert mode for some of the more tweaky parameters. So the idea of this is you don't have to put every parameter here, here, and here. Obviously, a plugin like this, if you actually look at it, it's got an insane amount of parameters. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's absurd. There's there's LFOs and there's gated verbs and there's shimmers and there's everything under the sun. So basically, the point of this is put what you want where you want it. If it makes sense to do stuff from faders, then do it. Um, but for me, being able to quickly grab a kind of a global control from the center section, I think is really useful. Um, and then I'm going to do more tweaking for me that the knobs or the faders. So that that's kind of a concept of um, of that. Okay, I know we got sidetracked, but um, we're going to do some more because uh, we lost a little bit of time. And you can you can hang out as long as you want, but I'm going to keep going. Um, if there's any yeah, feel free to uh, if there's any questions to, to pop in. Uh, I know we lost a little bit of time, but um, I do want to uh, want to do some more. <laughs> OK, so let's do some more. Um, I'll tell you what, before, before you move on, can we go back yeah. and revisit something real quick? We had a question. Yeah, about, yeah you, sure, sure. Can you, go, can you go back over what the 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 the. Uh, Ah, the the uh, jog wheel, <laughs> the jog wheel lights do. There's there's multiple things. Yeah, actually, go, go I was gonna. That. Yeah, I was actually gonna go to a jog wheel example right now. So this will explain right. everything. Everything in your awesome. life will be explained. Okay, cool. So let's just go and um, it doesn't really matter what we use. It could be a mono object, a stereo object, something. Let's go to blah, 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 blah. whatever. Right. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go and grab arbitrarily a. A panner window, right? And obviously, we're using this is uh, one of my mono objects, mono object seventy one. Okay, we're gonna look at the we're gonna look at the uh, the jog wheel and stuff. So, what what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna go and mouse over. Let's go to height, and I'm gonna actually lock height. Okay, and I'm gonna go to the center section as well. What we could do is let's change this view here too, so you can see a little bit better. So I'm going to jump back out. This is the beauty of all the folders, right? I can just say, okay, that's a mono object. Great. I know the mono objects are right there. Great. There we are. Great. There's the actual track mono object 71. It's attentioned. Boom. It's there too on the center section. Okay. So we'll see it in a couple different places, but let's also put this into an automatable mode. So object mono object 71, I'm just going to throw into latch. Okay. So we can see various things and I'll go through all the parameters in a second. Okay. So the switch right here, the back, it's like, you know, the arrow that points this way that lights up the jog wheel, right? So if I turn that off, yes, I am still controlling the Z, the elevation. Um, and you can see I'm, um, I've primed, I'm latch prime and stop. So I would hit auto match to kind of match out. Um, but I have to push to engage the jog wheel, that, bo that bottom um, back switch. Okay, now those are mirrored. Those two things are mirrored. Um, on the actual in, uh, jog wheel, there's a couple things going on here. This, um, what is that, three o'clock? Um, at three o'clock, you have a LED that indicates automation. And since I'm in latch, I'm in latch prime and stop, that's writing, it's priming automation, right? That's what that says. Depending if it's a send level or a volume, or obviously in this case, it's an elevation of pan parameter, um, it's going to look like that. The, the actual zero to 100 looks like this. You can see that. And then this LED says that's just a reference to say, oh, it's blue, it's pan, right? Oh, it's red, it's a preamp. Oh, it's yellow, it's a send. That's what that, that's what that does. Okay. So um, if I hit play and we just crank this guy, right? Um, I'm writing automation. Right. So um, obviously, if I am in latch, 
right? And I'm rolling, right? I would want to match out of automation, hit auto match, and I can pump out. Okay, so that should answer your question about about all of that. But this is a mirrored. It's mirrored from whatever you have chosen to dock to the um, uh, to the assignable knob, right? Okay, let's unlock it and let's go back to the hover concept. Okay, so let's go to size. Let's go to size, and now we're scaling size, right? Let's go to center percentage. Now we're now we're playing with center percentage. You can see center go to nothing. I have a phantom center. Center's going back up. Uh, let's go to the, you know, two knob panning, right? So whatever makes sense to map there, you can do it. And I, now I'm just kind of hovering and moving my mouse around to whatever control I need or want to control, right? as opposed to locking and keeping that there. And then back to the concept of the, um, let me hit auto match. This is important. Back to the concept of the windowing preferences, which we've talked about a million times, but it's still important. This track does not have to be attention. Let me attention totally different track. Let's go to mono object 76. Okay, totally different track. It's also in an automatable mode, doesn't matter. I go and grab the knob. The knob is still pointing to object 71, and I left it in front rear. Okay, so that's important. This is not the attention knob. It is the assignable knob, and it is different. It does not have to be the attention track. It can be locked, and it can be retrieved, and it can be separate from the attention track. So I think that's an important important thing to understand okay auto match any other was that the main question gil about that uh he's he was he was asking about there's a, a left lower there's a left lower and i don't and i don't see it i i see there's three things right now on that knob it's basically uh what's up about 10 11 o'clock is the mm -hmm. value of whatever is uh on the assignable knob on the on the three o'clock that's automation mode and then at the bottom is uh all right so right now you don't have anything assigned and we have a a light down in the left lower but that doesn't have anything to do with the assignable knob that's yeah it's so it, it's gonna vary depending on the function right now i'm on a preamp right um yeah it's going to vary depending on what you're what you're trying to target that's uh automation and ascend um you know yeah it's, and, it's, and it's, it's that it's that left when when you're not targeted it's that left seven o'clock lower so it, it basically i guess it resets itself to nothing when nothing's targeted that could be yeah that's that's possible and it yeah so um okay well, that's the idea. So, um, cool. Okay, let's. Uh, let me show you a couple other things. Um, and, and just in case everybody's not really watching the the, the chat, uh, we had somebody ask um, if the the jog wheel on the dock, because uh, you're going to get a signable knob on on uh, U control as well. They were asking about that the uh, assignable that the uh, jog wheel on the dock would be able to be. Uh, purpose for the assignable knob and it will as well mm -hmm. there, there will yeah. be a preference in in you control to assign that to the assignable knob yep um cool okay so uh let's just do a couple last things and then we'll we'll kind of wrap up here um uh let me go back to the big mtm view um i find the idea of being able to preserve start settings on the faders but also on in pro tools holistically to be really powerful um, and that could be the you know whatever you're working on you want to see clips you don't want to see clips um you want to see the tracks in a certain way you can very easily change every look in the pro tools interface and then save that as a let's just go to our small view here real quick here save that as a uh as a view right and so let's just do some things really quick and we'll customize this um and let me just so i'm going to go back to shift a plus um we're going to go back to shift plus uh we're going to hit default right and default says show me the edit window in this particular way with these particular views i'm going to say i actually want the clip to be open the clip list to be open right and um 
and I actually want to, in general, for this particular workflow, I actually want clip effects open and I want maybe more information, maybe samples. Okay. So all I've got to do is basically hit and sorry, let me bring up the let me bring the window up so you can see it again. I'm just going to hit enter. So I've reprogrammed enter. Enter to usually is a numeric key that says add a new marker. I've just changed mine to basically say, um, uh, you know, add a new memory, add a new window configuration because of this stuff. So I'm just going to really quickly say, let's just overwrite locate 10. And um, this is um, start B or whatever you want to call it, right? It says, you want to write over that? I'm going to say, yeah, absolutely. And so, so now, um, you know, I've got my default, which we talked about. I've got my start B, which is a totally different setup. And I can, you know, in individually recall those and get to different views. So check this out. I'm going to go back to layouts plus uh, window configurations. And we're going to go back to effects. I'm going to bring up effects. So it accessed effects and effects on the desk. Bring this, get this out of the way so you can see better. Effects on the desk, effects on the screen, right? We'll jump back to defaults. Okay, I'm going to go to clip effects. I have a certain view that I want to take advantage of for clip effects, right? For example, and let's actually just change the view that you see there for a second. Okay, so we can see a little bit differently. Um, and um, I'm going to just justify, I'm going to shift control, click on percussion to justify that track. Okay, I'm going to show you one more thing. There's always one more thing, but I'm just going to, um, I'm going to select a couple of these. I'm just going to hold down shift. I'm going to um, just delete some things real quick here. We're going to zoom out. Okay, just want to show you a couple more simple soft keys that are in here that you are not aware of. So um, I can set a mark in, I can set a mark out, and I can do a trim selection. Okay, that did trim to selection. I can jump over here. Um, I'm going to get rid of that for a second. And I'm going to do a mark out. I'm going to span a range. And I'm going to do shift trim selection. And that's basically fill, use the clip that you're on to fill to the boundaries, right? So it's kind of the opposite, uh, but we added it in there, but it's kind of the opposite of, of trimming to a selection. So I'm trimming to a selection, I'm setting an in and out, and I'm saying trim. If I'm filling to a selection, I'm setting an in, I'm setting an out, and I'm doing shift trim to selection. All right, so that's the idea there. And then right above that, right, you can see we already talked about this, but I can hover under on any parameter. And now I'm adjusting filters, right? I'm assignable knobbing to my heart's content for that clip or clips from the assignable knob or the wheel for those pieces. Okay. So um, let's, uh, let me just undo a little bit. Go back a bit. Let's go back to our um, default view. Right. Let's go back to our master touch module big view. Let's revisit the center section here, soft keys, and back to automation. Oop, sorry, back to the automation module soft keys. Okay. And let's just dig into one of these real quick. Right. So basically what it says is quickly recall that, you know, that saved window configuration of all the sets and pro tools and bring me back a layout that's based on that same thing that I want to get to quickly. So that's the idea. Um, it's really we've we've improved the we've hardened the way that the soft keys work. Um, and um, it's very, uh, you know, now you can have, you know, you can have more delay, uh, you can have a lot more um, predictability about making changes on the desk with regard to the channels and then changes with regard to the views, right? The windows, okay? So that's the idea. So, um, so that's kind of a, uh, that's kind of a, a view, brief view of what I, what I wanted to show. The assignable knob, it's really another touch sensitive interface that you can use to control a parameter on the desk. And you're gonna kind of find out what, may, what it makes sense to control from your perspective. Um, if it's something that you wanna, you know, again, one of the concepts on the desk is having dedicated sections, right? Dedicated EQ, panner, um, you know, controls of sends and, and uh, plug-in parameters. But it's just one more place that you can place an important control and either lock it and get back to it, right? And um, I think that people will find that very useful. Um, 
excuse me, we've done the work of programming. Let's go back to shift zero, programming the bottom 24 functions for either track layouts plus window configurations track layouts plus memory locations or if you just want to do some window changes quickly you have a whole bucket of window configurations and i can quickly change anything in the environment in my in pro tools just by pressing a button and then I'll, i can always get back to my default again right my default is here okay appreciate your time and um really very excited about some of the new stuff that we are showing um, and um, continue forward with some new ideas, but uh, thanks for stopping by.